Hi everyone, it's me Serena. Welcome back to Little Bites of HR, a podcast talking about all things people and culture. In each short episode, we'll keep it real about all things HR with an added UDI lens. Welcome to part two of our Tribunal episode. We have been discussing a recent case following claims of racial discrimination and constructive dismissal, which were raised by a teacher against her previous organization, a school. The school had gone through restructuring and made her reapply for a role that she had been occupying for a number of years prior to this restructuring. When we follow the process, there were a couple of red flags that we identified, such as the fact that she was actually replaced by colleagues who were less experienced and happened to be white. She was then not offered two other roles which were available at the time of the restructuring. We are going to continue to dig into this and the concerning areas that we identify as we look into the case. But if you haven't listened to part one, we ask that you go and listen to that episode first before you continue on with this. So I guess my next question is, what rights then does she have in this process or what rights should she have had? I mean, listen, the big thing for me, and I'm going to sit and lean in on this, yeah? The big thing for me is that there were clearly more positions than there were candidates, Mm. internal candidates at that. The fact that she was rejected for the role that she reapplied for that was originally hers, insulted by being replaced by someone less experienced, less qualified, and she questioned, is it because of my race? The fact that there was a role available for her and she didn't get the opportunity to have that role is outstanding to me. I don't think I've seen such flagrant, I'm going to call it disrespect, Mm. in all of my years, right? And there are going to be multiple cases like this, but they have an absolute right. You know, think about what the suitable alternative options are. There were clearly suitable alternative options because there were two other heads of roles available. So if you're going to insult her by not placing her in those things, which you shouldn't do anyway, so pay the money. But Mm -hmm. if you're going to do that, then have the very decency to be clear about the suitable alternatives that are available. So I think it's, um, yeah, unacceptable. (laughs) Absolutely. And I think um, going back to, I think what you said, Temini, she wasn't given a right to appeal. Why not? Mm. Why not? Mm. Did you not want her to appeal the process because you mm. thought actually maybe she would have a leg to stand on? Mm. Do you know what I mean? Serena, my man didn't even want her in the in the school. What are you talking about? <laughs> he didn't. Oh, he didn't want her in the school. So no, no, you can't appeal because I don't want you in the school. So the fact that we've gone through this and I've, you know, rigged the waiting and you're not through. Why would I give you the right to appeal? Just gently Mm. let that go away. Maybe it's on the mindset, because some people are, that that would gently go away because it is exhausting to take an organisation to tribunal, yeah? Yeah. But don't underestimate exhaustion coupled with the rights of an Mm. individual. This took place in 2017. Clearly it hasn't closed until late last year. That means that that individual, that um, um, black woman who's been affected by this that employee affected by this has had four years four years of this don't underestimate don't underestimate clearly I'm getting up in my passion right now <laughs> as you should as you said because it's, it's, a, it's a disrespectful case mm. so where do we think the HR advisor was in this discussion guys I think she was on annual leave I'm <laughs> not- <laughs> I don't think she was there on I the beach, absolutely. cocktails in hand, book in hand. <laughs> uh, I suppose there is a question about whether they do have a HR advisor. Look, let's be realistic. This is why our organisation exists, right? And it's not a plug, it's just realistic. Some organisations don't have internal HR advisors. Mm. And therefore you've got, for example, head teachers just going off on their basis. Not this knowing what not, they're doing. Not knowing what they're doing. This is why organisations like ours exist. This is why it's important to have the support and advice that you need. Now, I'm balancing that because I actually don't think that this head teacher needed advice. I think this head teacher did exactly what they wanted to because it was orchestrated. Mm. The moment he had that conversation, or they, I don't know if he had that conversation back in May 2016, they were orchestrating the exit of that individual. But um, if this HR advisor wasn't on the beach or wasn't on (laughs) annual, yeah, then they're. Yeah, that there's a fundamental failing of, of the individual to seek the support that was needed. 
Absolutely. What would you guys have done then? Say, say, you know, say that the HR advisor was there. What would you guys have done if you were the HR advisor? Let's let let's take out the first option, which is resigning, because that's what I would have done. I would be gone. All right, my notice would have been given in. Um, but what steps would you have actually taken if you were in that person's shoes? I think I would have removed the power from the head teacher mm. and maybe got an external help like what our company does, mm, yeah. because clearly no one in the school knows what, what they needed to do, mm. which is why they ended up paying all this money out. Mm. Uh, 462,000 and some pence to be exact. Ooh, and it should um, have been more. It, I think so. I mean, there were four years of a uh, lot of earnings for sure. There's injury to feelings. I hope is part of that. I don't know if it is definitely race discrimination and definitely constructive dismissal or unfair dismissal. You see, remember, let, because I don't think I made this clear at the top of the case, um, the, what actually happened is the teacher resigned. So, so they got to a place where they said, this is this is too much and resigned and then claimed and clearly would have claimed racial discri dis discrimination, harassment and unfair dismissal. If I was the HR advisor, I kind of want to be on the strand of what Serena's saying. Of course, we can talk about all the steps. So I would have made sure there was a the right process. Yeah. I would have made sure the waiting was right. I would have made sure the skills, all of that, blah, blah, blah. But actually... I think a role of a HR advisor in this particular situation is to hold the leadership team, the decision makers accountable. Mm -hmm. You know, our role is not to sit there and just go along with what um, hiring managers or line managers or leadership team members want to do. Our role, actually, if we are there to support people and culture in an organisation and consider the risks of that organisation if they don't do the right thing, is to hold those individuals accountable. This is why... It's important that you have that voice of people and culture or HR at board level, at senior leadership level, because if you don't, then you have junior HR team members who have no power, no influence at senior members. And so hierarchy comes into play when a leadership team member says, this is the way I'm going. And the junior HR team members just says, OK, well, then these are the things you need to do. There needs to be a freeness, a fairness of balance shifting. So if I was the HR advisor, in my bolshiness, I would have stopped the head teacher, the head teacher in his tracks. Mm. Yeah. So I kind of want to talk about being a black woman in this situation. Yeah. And and that's my lens. I've had um multiple experiences and examples of the impact, the the multi-layered impact of being black and a woman in this position of this case but I feel like we're well out of time I also feel like that's a conversation that needs so much longer and we should bring in some other voices so we should period I think, yeah I think we should leave it there but overall what 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 well, that, that sounded like I was rapping what 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 I was just trying to finish <laughs> what 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 okay no let me finish what's your final word on this case <laughs> let me <laughs> final word I want to say big up to the employee because I think many Absolutely. of us would have just been like do you know what I can't be bothered let me just pack my load and go but she said no 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 I'm not I'm, I'm not an idiot so I'm gonna stand my ground and take these people to court and I won yeah yeah yeah, my yeah. takeaway, I think, talk to ACAS. During that process, if I was, you know, that lady, I would have been calling ACAS as soon as they were doing, you know, these fishy, oh, we, we have a reason to do so, so and so. I want that legal advice. Yeah. Mm, getting mediation. Yeah. Um, I guess I need to do a one-liner. I'm going to do a one-liner in support of the organisation because, you know, you two both took it personally into the teacher. So let me do a one-liner in, in support of the organisation. Don't make this kind of mistake. Mm. This kind of mistake is not just about the damaging impact that you have on the employee. It's also about damage to your own brand, your own reputation, inappropriate conduct from leaders within an organization and the setting and tone of an environment that is unfair and inequitable. And if you have that type of um, reputation, I mean, everyone knows who this school is now. We've not named them. But would you consider working for this school? Mm. No, I would never approach this school. So as an organisation, if there is a true and valid need to go through restructure, reconsideration, do it in an equitable way, do it the right way, get support and advice. There's so much available. There's organize, there's ACAS, there is information that you can get from anywhere. You can use organisations like ours. 
but do the right thing. Put yourself in the shoes of that employee. And if you think that the approaches and steps you are taking is equitable and inclusive and fair to you, and you've considered the intersectional layers of others, then you're fine. If you make this kind of mistake, don't phone us because I won't help you. I'm just going to tell you off and then send you on your way. As always, thanks for listening. We hope you gained valuable information today. We can be found on all social media platforms with our handle, Elizabeth of HR. If you still need further help or want to find out more, then get in touch for a free 20 minute consultation discussion by booking online at www.alittlebitofhr.com. Bye.